Hello people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Wednesday, the 4th of August, and it is time for another episode of the Daily Leads. And when I say the 4th of August, that means only one thing. We are now 10 days away from our season opener against Manchester United at Old Trafford. Tomorrow we're going to be in single digits, man. I cannot we of course we've got some live football tonight as well. Leeds United will play Ajax. I'll be doing a watch along on the channel for that as well. We've got plenty of updates for you today on Noah Lang, Jens Kayusta, and a very big update on your main man Matthias Kuna. So keep it locked at the Just Joe Football Show. Smash a like, subscribe, and of course hit that notification bell so you don't miss them live streams. And let's get into it. Okay, I was going to start first of all with, of course, tonight's friendly, and it turns out it's not just one. It's not just one, we're playing two games tomorrow, uh, today, sorry, uh, against Ajax. Uh, the under-23s will play an Ajax under-21 side during the day. There'll be no watch along for that. I'm going to watch Space Jam 2 with the kids, with it being the summer holiday, so I'll uh, report back on that. Uh, and then on the evening, of course, I'll be live from 7 o'clock. The game kicks off at quarter past 7. Leeds United will face Ajax at the Johan Cruyff Stadium. Um, looking forward to it. As I say, the closer we get, the more we'll see from the players in terms of outputs, in terms of you know creating them new relationships, especially down that left hand side. Be interesting to see if any of the under twenty threes actually get a call up to the senior side. In maybe like a Somerville, I'd like to see it. But as I say, make sure you get your notification bell smashed. We'll be live for that. Um, we're now going to chat some transfer stuff, OK? We're going to chat about Noah Lang, OK? We know that Leeds United have been chasing Noah Lang for quite some time. Uh, he's been linked with a move to West Yorkshire on numerous occasions, 22-year-old. Uh, he only just recently made his loan move to the Belgian side club Bruges permanent this year after going on loan from Ajax. It now turns out we may face stiff competition from Spain. La Liga side Sevilla are also in the race for Noah Lang. Uh, look, Noah Lang recently acquired a new winger on loan, Calado, from Barcelona. We know, we've heard before, that they wouldn't be willing to move any player on unless they have a ready-made replacement. We know Victor Orto is going to be waiting for this winger late into the window. If Noah Lang is that man, we know now Club Bruges have entered or got a new winger and other clubs are starting to sniff about. So maybe there is a chance that Noah Lang will be allowed to leave Club Bruges. And we know from Noah Lang speaking to Bas Dost, he wants a new experience. He wants to leave. And of course, he would want to go to La Liga or the Premier League. It's the next step, you know. Um, hopefully, he chooses Leeds United. Hopefully, Leeds are in that hunt. Um, but listen, we'll have to wait and see on Noah Lang. He's a kid with plenty of talent. Um, we're now going to speak about Yangel Herrera. It's been reported on the continent that he is set for a move to Leeds United. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa is a massive fan of Yangel Herrera uh, and wants to acquire the services of the Creole. Um, apparently, he'll be allowed to leave for around about £20 million. Um, We know that Leeds United were waiting on Conor Gallagher. We waited a month. You know, maybe had we acquired Conor Gallagher a month ago, then we'd be already on to that wing option. But because we were waiting for Conor Gallagher, because we were waiting on that deal, we still haven't signed a centre midfielder. Well, like I said, we're 10 days away now from the start of the season. It's highly likely whoever they bring in is not going to be ready for that season opener. They would have to, you know, remove Mateus Click and Stuart Dallas anyway. Um, but if Yangel Herrera is that man, then 20 million is the figure that's been banded about. Uh, one player that won't be coming is Jens Kajusta, okay? The Swedish international that plays at FC Midgetland. Yes, Midgetland. Listen, I don't know how to pronounce it any other way. My apologies. You know you don't come here for your uh, for your pronunciation lessons. I can, I can barely speak English, let's be honest. But yeah, Jens Kajusta is, looks like he's going to sign with Brentford. I didn't actually know this, but Brentford owner um, Matthew uh, Benham actually owns Midgetland and Brentford. Um, so it makes sense that this deal would happen. Stead, Renee, we know Ren have already had a, a, a transfer bid turned down at 13.5 million. Uh, and it looks like Brentford now lead the race and apparently have agreed a fee with Midgetland for Jens Kajusta. Um, We know that Leeds were interested, although they hadn't approached the player, um, but he did have serious interest from the Premier League. And that serious interest is Brentford. And I mean, it makes sense for him to move there, especially with their owner being the same owner at Brentford. Like, there should be something where that needs to be looked into because 
he's basically a Brentford player now, isn't he? They've already signed Frank Onyeka um, from Midgetland, and it looks like they'll also make a double swoop and sign Jens Kiusta. So there's another centre midfielder that won't be coming to Leeds United. We're running out of options. Look, Yangel Herrera was one that's constantly been linked, has been linked for some time. And of course, Lewis O'Brien as well. We know we wanted Conor Gallagher. That's not happened. Maybe we're looking at Conor Gallagher. I know a lot of fans were saying, listen, it's a loan without a view to buy. But maybe we need them extra funds for a winger, for a marquee signing like a Noah Lang or a Mateus Kuna, who we'll get to in just a second. Um, but yeah, Yangel Herrera, 20 million or... You know, do we move for Lewis O'Brien at Huddersfield, which is about between eight and ten? Look, I think Lewis O'Brien fits the bill. I think he's uh, of a young age. There's going to be resale value there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's a player Bielsa can mould, like he has done with the majority of our squad. But we'll have to wait and see. I think if we do bring Lewis O'Brien, a lot of the fan base might be a bit meh. But it is what it is. Maybe we'll then look to make a marquee signing with whatever transfer funds we do have left. Um, and we're now going to speak about potentially a marquee signing, one that would wet the lips of all Leeds fans. It's one that would get me excited. It is, of course, Mateus Kuna. Listen, I thought Mateus Kuna wasn't going to happen. I've said as much. I think I don't, you know, I'm on record as saying I don't see him leaving her to Berlin this window. His price was too high. I think they wanted about 40 million for him. Of course, they signed him on a new deal amid interest from clubs like Leeds. Like clubs do, they protect their assets. They got him on a new deal, give him some more money, and now they can demand even more. Look, he's been absolutely flying in the Olympics for Brazil. Um, he's, he's scored a couple of goals, got a couple of assists there in the final up against Spain. He's had a very, very good tournament. Um, it's now been reported, however, that he could arrive in England for as little as 25 million euros. This is according to Court Offside Media. Of course, as we know, Matthias Kuna was in the orbit of Leeds United for quite some time. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, Victor Otter is a massive fan of his. We tried last summer, you know. We've already spoken in January to this football club, OK? And we were quoted an amount of 40 million, you know. And we're not willing to reach it at that time. You know, forget it. We'll try again in the summer. Of course, he signs a new deal. It makes it more difficult to do that. However, due to issues like the pandemic, television de deals, all this sort of stuff, it turns out it has made Herford Berlin actually lower their claims. And I've seen it reported on Twitter is we're now getting to that point of the window where clubs start to reduce it. Clubs start to panic and think, damn, we need to move this player on if we want to get X, Y, Z. We need to, you know, balance the books, as it were. And it turns out Herford Berlin could be in that category. And it now turns out he could come to the Premier League for as little as 25 million euros. It's clear he wants to leave Herford Berlin. You know, he wants to embark on a new adventure. Um, look, We've seen it with Rodrigo de Paul. Although he didn't leave Udinese, he was flirting with other clubs. It was out there that he wanted to leave. Yes, we weren't able to acquire him, but a season later, he's left. He's gone to Atletico Madrid, you know, the winners of the Liga. And Mateus Cunha is doing a similar thing. Whether or not he'll leave her for Berlin this time, I'm not sure, but he definitely does want to leave. And the lads at LUFC fans on got stuck into his agent again. And he said, look, there have been no bids from for, for Mateus Cunha from Leeds United. Only some talks, which I told you about before, about a month ago. He said, I'm sure Victor Otto loves Mateus, but I think the problem is the money. Now, whether or not that's the 40 million euros, maybe we'll now have a nibble again, if it's to be believed that the you know fee's been reduced to 25. Um, but it could well be the salary, because he goes on to say, Zenit St. Petersburg, I'm mad about the player. They can pay the 4 million salary. They could play, pay even 8 million salary if we wanted it, but it's not all about the money. So it turns out he wants big wage. He, he, he's demanding that, whether or not Leeds can, can you know, pick that up. We know that the agent came out and said, look, we don't know it. We, we know Victor is a massive fan of Mateus, but is he that much of a fan? Does he value him that much to pay him what they deserve? Seems like the agent's doing a bit of posturing. We know Zenit St. Petersburg will take him in a heartbeat, but does he want to go there? Well, this is the thing. He also went on to say, we have also spoke with two English clubs. Leeds are not in that two English clubs, but so we'll have to see what happens. I wonder who they are. For me, it's got Liverpool written all over it. I don't know. He's a Liverpool type player like a Rafinha, you know. Um, but Mateus Kuna is available. He is available. The fees drop from 40 million down to 25 million euros. If Leeds want a marquee signing, we know Victor Orta's big on him. We have the money. There must be money there to pay for this kid. 
I think if you do get a Lewis O'Brien, go get a Mateus Cunha. If we can get him this summer, it would be absolutely unbelievable. It would be the marquee signing. Imagine having Cunha and Rafinha on either wing, you know? It would be absolutely unbelievable if we could get this deal over the line. But as we know, you know, he's saying two English clubs have, you know, approached us. Zenit St. Petersburg are mad on him. One of them's not Leeds. We know Victor Otto loves him, but I think the problem is the money. You know, we have to be savvy. We have to be smart. But if Mateus Kuna is anywhere affordable now that that 40 million has gone down to 25, then please make it, <laughs> please make it happen, Victor Otto. I think it would be an absolutely phenomenal signing. We're now going to touch on a potential outgoing young Robbie Gotts. He's not featured in pre-season. He went on, on loan to Salford last season. He's back at the football club, like Niall Huggins, etc. Um, Bobby Camwer, these Jordan Stevens, these players are involved. It looks like their time at Leeds is, is coming to an end. And apparently Motherwell are looking to sign Robbie Gotts on loan, uh, on a season-long loan. I'm not sure if it'll include uh, with a view to a permanent. Maybe Robbie wouldn't want to move to Scotland, but it looks like he will be exiting Leeds United in the near future. Um, we also have a, an interview on LUTV from Captain Fantastic Liam Cooper. Um, he was speaking about last season, what the you know prospects are for this. So he basically said, we know exactly how we got where to where we were last season finishing ninth. We know what is required and we don't want to be one of those teams that struggle in the second season. No second season syndrome. I think we're confident enough to know it ain't going to happen. I know it anyway. He said, we brought Junior Firpo in and the lads have taken well to him. He's willing to work hard. That's brilliant. And it's the type of players we are. We have a great core and the lads know what is expected of them. He said, we got to get to the heights of last season. It's not an easy feat. It takes a lot of hard work. There's a lot of preparation and taking each game as it comes. We'll look to do that. Listen, Cooper being quite coy, we want to aim for them heights. We know that Tyler Roberts and a few of the other lads have spoke about Europe. We know as fans have done that. Cooper's obviously a little bit level-headed. He has to be. He's the captain. But you know, behind closed doors, this football club and these players know they can do bits this season. Um, he was asked a question about outsiders outsiders questioning Leeds United and if they can follow up their impressive finish in the Premier League, talking about that second season syndrome. And he said, look, I've been at the club long enough to know we always get that speculation and heat from outside. It's all drab. Basically saying it's all BS. I've mentioned that before. We don't take any notice of it. We know what is needed of us. And that's all that matters is what's inside these four walls. You'd love to hear that from, of course, Captain Liam Cooper. And for those that question the man, listen, he will captain Leeds United this season. He will start alongside Diego Llorente if he's fit in that opening game. It is what it is. I love Liam Cooper. I am a Liam Cooper stan. It is what it is. Um, we have also, guys, acquired a new loan manager. I didn't even realise that was a thing. We have got Andrew Taylor as our new loan manager from uh, Sunderland, I believe. Uh, Tom from Focus on Leeds, good friend of the show, I know he watches, uh, he said it's quite interesting. Are we now going to see more players leave on loan and actually have a chance to make it back at some point? We know under Bielsa, if you go out on loan, it's normally curtains. It's normally game over. But maybe bringing in a loan manager, he's able to manage it better and ensure, right, OK, we're going to send that player there We'll expect him back and he'll be able to break in. I don't know. Or maybe it's the fact that we've got so many players now in the under-23s, we need someone to manage that, you know? So it's not in the behest of a, a Victor or a, a Biels or whoever it you know, might fall upon. You know, it could be seen as a positive. It could be seen as a pathway into the football club or it might be seen as a way of just getting rid of players uh, quicker and easier that someone's just sole purpose is to manage that. I can imagine at Chelsea, for example, I remember doing a live stream, stream a friend of mine, Abdallah, saying, oh, you should get Lewis Baker, he'd really fit in. And I was like, we've already had him. He went, really? I thought he was still at VT Zarnham. Do you know what I mean? These players, I bet Chelsea... I bet the Chelsea manager doesn't even realise Izzy Brown's a player or even got injured. Do you know what I mean? So I guess you need someone to take care of that. Whether or not it's a positive for the young players going out on loan, we'll have to wait and see. Because at the minute, for me, if you go out on loan, it is curtains. Um, Leeds United women have confirmed the signing of goalkeeper Lauren Joyce from Huddersfield. They seem to be moving in the right direction. It's great to see. Uh, you can watch their games. You can get them free. So make sure you look out for their fixtures as well. But yeah, they've signed a new goalkeeper, Lauren Joyce from Huddersfield. Um, we're now going to give you uh, a few updates on Premier League chat. Yes, it's going to be that horrible word, that VAR, OK? Uh, there has been some changes to VAR in the last 24 hours, which we'll see for the coming season. I thought VAR was used spectacularly well during the Euros. You didn't even tell it was being used at times. 
You know, you didn't even know it was being checked. And I think that's how it should be used. And it turns out now the Premier League are going to follow suit in a similar sort of way. There'll be changes to penalties. They're going to clamp down on soft penalties. Um, so, for example, if you get the slightest touch from, a, you know, uh, I don't know, a bit like the Sterling one against Denmark. I mean, I thought it was a pen. Of course I did, with me being English and that. But if a player's looked like he's looking for contact or there's been the smallest amount of contact, if it's a soft penalty, they're not going to give him. We know what it's been like where they slow it down to the nth degree and they say, right, OK, he's, he's, his back leg was touched by that guy's knee, so we're going to give a pen and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be a bit more real time, which we want to see, man. They try to change too much. Don't fix what ain't broken is what I say. And we're also going to see offsides change as well so that we're now not going to see this toenail offside. You know, we know firsthand Patrick Bamford pointing where he wanted the ball, his finger, his shoulder, his arm, your cock, whatever you want could be classed as being offside. Well, that's now going to change. You know where the lines are? Unfortunately, we're not going to see the lines anymore. I say, unfortunately, I'd rather not see them because it just means we overanalyze and it's all we speak about after the football game. We're not going to actually see the workings out anymore. But where the lines overlap normally, that's going to be scrapped. There's going to have to be a clear gap between the attacker and the defender in order for it to be offside. So if it's like this, it's not offside. The benefit is going to be given to the attacker. So next time Paddy Bamford's telling, you know, Tyler where he wants the ball or whoever it was, that's going to be fine. Okay. If there's a gap and there's a clear space between defender and attacker, then fair enough. And that's how it should be. That's how it's always been, right? Before we start getting all these daft lines out and stuff. Again, don't change. Don't fix what ain't broken. Um, but yeah, that'll be positive changes. Positive changes. Let's get back to some normality when it comes to football. Uh, and just to finish, guys, as well, um, sort of Leeds United related. Ronaldo Vieira is due to a return back to England. It looks like Sheffield United have agreed to sign the former Leeds Academy product, Ronaldo Vieira from Sampdoria. 23-year-old is going to join Blades on a loan to buy deal. Look, I'd love to see Blades back in the Premier League. I have friends that are uh, Blades fans, and I like them as a Yorkshire club in terms of some of the others, like your Huddersfield, uh, your Chef Wednesdays. I can't abide Blades. I, I, I've never really minded, to be honest, and I hope they come back first time of asking. And I want to wish Ronaldo Vieira good luck, because I think he's an absolute baller. Um, and he's more suited to the English game, I would say, as well. But yeah, that's it from your Daily Leads. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you join me a little bit later on for the Ajax Watch Along. Looking forward to that as well. So make sure you smash a like, subscribe and get the notification bell smash so you don't miss when I'm live. We've got plenty of live streams coming this week in the build up, of course, to Manchester United away in just 10 days time, folks. 10 days time. Can't wait. Peace out now. Leads, leads, leads.